Welcome to the Success Pick and Mix podcast. I'm your host, Nikki Raby, a professional pick and mixer. I'm a personal brand coach, a speaker, an actor, a creator, and a podcaster. I'm on a mission to help you find and create your version of success, your pick and mix of life and business on your terms, a blend that complements your personality, your goals, and your circumstances. Since 2018, I've been sharing interviews and mini episodes to help you unlock your next step, to make it real and make it happen. Round here, we dream big. We go for the ideal version. We talk about money and make moves our future selves would be proud of. This podcast is free and available for you whenever you need it. So do rate, review and subscribe for new episodes. If you want to go deeper with my support, check out my freebies house and unlock the rooms you choose. NikkiRaby.com forward slash freebies house. I also have workshops, programs and one-on-one bespoke offerings. For prices and availability, go to NikkiRaby.com. Thank you, as always, for spending some time with me and my guests. Now, on to today's episode. In today's episode, I'm talking to Annie Ridout, who is the founder and the editor of The Early Hour. She's a freelance journalist for The Guardian, Red Magazine, Stylist, and also a copywriter for Clementine App, a baby centre blogger and a speaker. And she's spoken on BBC Radio and TV, Stylist Live, and also she's a mum of two. So life is busy. In this episode, we're going to be talking all about how to pitch, how to get in the press, how to stand out and be noticed and also use social media to continue the conversation and build a community around you. I hope you enjoy the episode. Hi Annie, how are you? Good, thank you. Lovely to have you. Thanks so much for being on the podcast. I'm sure people have seen you on Instagram and visited your site, but if they haven't, um, tell us all a little bit about what you do and, and what you're all about. I am... Um, founder and editor of The Early Hour, which is a digital parenting and lifestyle magazine um, with articles that go out early in the morning. Um, and I'm a freelance journalist, copywriter, blogger. So I've written for The Guardian and Stylist magazine, Red magazine. Um, and, and I write all the copy for a fairly new app called Clementine, which is amazing, an app for women. So I do lots of yeah, lots of different freelance work and I'm kind of branching out into doing a bit of PR and social media management. So Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I would love to know how you started the early hour because I think it's one of those games that we all used to play when we were little where you'd have your Fisher Price little till and you know, a nice notebook and you'd be like, Yeah, I'm working on my magazine but you know, you actually did it and you launched it. How was that process for you and how did you get clear on the idea to begin with? Um, so it's, I started blogging years ago. I had a blog called Annie Loves and it was basically just an online diary. And this was like when blogs first came out, people were still saying, what, what on earth is a <laughs> blog? And that um, and I did it as. I guess as a way to store my thoughts and to have a bit of an online presence, but I didn't know anything about SEO or growing an audience. Um, but I did have a few hundred views a day, which I didn't realize at the time was quite good. Yes. And so then I just carried on doing it and never, and I shared it on Facebook amongst friends. And back then you could share something on Facebook and of course it would spread. Um, all your friends would see it because they didn't have the algorithm thing and they didn't have paid for posts. It was a different. Um, experience so I had that blog and then I started I did a journalism master's and I started writing some local news stuff and then I'm writing for other websites but always always liked the first person blogging so I then launched moved back to London I'd been living in Somerset for a while moved back to London set up a new website annieridout.com and had a fresh blog and it was a bit more serious a bit less I was still in there but less about what outfit I was wearing that day and more about <laughs> what book I was reading or what um feminist march I wanted to go on yes. so and what a you bit more wearing to that feminist march yeah probably <laughs> <laughs> um and then 
and then I carried on writing for other people because that was where the money was and never tried to monetize my own blog, but got to a point where I was doing lots of work for other people and, and wondered if actually I now had the experience to launch something of my own, which I could make money from. And I, by this point, had had a, a baby, my daughter, who's now three. But when she was one, I decided to launch my own digital magazine, which some people still refer to as a blog. And in some ways, it's got a sort of bloggy feel to it because it is quite personal in some ways. But I liked the idea of it being a bit wider than that. And um, it wouldn't just be my voice and uh, and about my life. It would be interviewing lots of other people about their experience of particularly parenting, but um, other sort of lifestyle areas. So I wrote loads of content, interviewed loads of people. I think I got a probably, I can't remember, maybe 60, no, probably 20 articles ready to go and maybe another 20 in drafts. And I launched the early hour with one article going out every day at 5 a.m. Wow. And where and how it is now and the sort of the flavor and the uh, the tone and the style of it, is that how it began or has it shifted and, and changed as you have? I think it's definitely changed because I launched and I kind of wanted it to be for everyone who was up early. So I'd started it because I'd had these early mornings breastfeeding my daughter and scrolling through my phone and there was nothing, there was stuff for me to read, but I would have read it yesterday when I was breastfeeding her in the afternoon <laughs> on the, the Guardian or um, Stylist or whatever uh, websites I was getting my, reading my articles on. And, but then I had a meeting with them, this mentor I used to have who said, well, you know, I'm an older woman, but I'm up early because I'm going through the menopause and there are loads of other people who could read your content. So I, I decided to make it really broad and sort of make it a lot about mornings and sort of lifestyle in general. And then I realized over time that the people following and who were really interested were, um, sorry, my, my baby's just come home early. <laughs> <laughs> this, is fine. Life. this is life. This is life. This is life. So if he doesn't start crying. Yeah, so I realized that actually my followers were parents because they were on the same journey I was on. They were when I was talking about potty training or sleepless nights, they were um they were relating and finding that that useful or funny or um you know, it made them feel better. So I decided then to go back to my initial idea, which was to focus more on parents and speak to them. So it's it's kind of it started quite narrow and then it broadened out a bit and then it's narrowed down a bit and then it's almost like ready to become a bit broader again I think mm. and how have you grown it so quickly because I think sometimes we I when I speak to clients who are looking um, at starting a business or monetizing their blog or having a creative output they may say things like well hasn't this been done before or hasn't um it isn't it you know full up as it as it were is the industry full up how have you stood out and, and stood the test of time as well and, and regularly grown? I think that's an interesting comment that you made about, um, you know, doesn't, doesn't it already exist? Because I did a Prince's Trust business course and one of the first things the teacher said was your idea almost certainly already exists, but that's fine. It's how you execute it. So I knew that there were other there were parenting bloggers, there were other online magazines for parents, there were definitely other similar things. So my, the idea of putting articles out early in the morning was my USP. But also, I realized it's about creating a voice um, that people trust and like and a community. And so even if you're doing something that someone else is doing, you can you can do it better and you can do it or you can do it in a slightly different way. And I think there's I think there's such a big parenting thing at the moment. It's massive on Instagram, all the Insta mums and dads, and with people engaging with parenting in a different way and the sort of work life juggle with lots of people, lots of mothers going back to work now and wanting flexible work. And there's there are so many interesting conversations going on that I think there's space for lots of um, different sort of voices, lots of blogs and and websites, which yeah. 
I agree. tell different sometimes stories. Sometimes people need to hear it from you. It's um, I always use this analogy with clients of like I didn't really get science in year seven and eight, and then in year nine I had a cracking teacher, and I was just like, oh, I understand it finally. <laughs> this is yes. great, and yes. you know, wanted just to be her friend. She was a bit peculiar, so I didn't really. But um, you know, she just said it in a way that I wanted to. I mean, the blogging platform is is fantastic for communicating with customers and audience and building that community. And Mm. I know that not everybody is a natural writer, but sometimes there can be that pressure to create content. How would you practically find your voice if you weren't really sure how to begin? So I've had Um, two people have come to me recently who want to blog and are finding it hard to not just to find their voice but to feel confident that Mm. then what they're writing isn't one woman who's um, launching a business said I want to put out my first blog can you just read it before I promote it to tell me I don't sound really stupid so and it's I've had to close my eyes sometimes when I've pressed publish especially in the early days I I can't believe that these thoughts are going out onto the internet Oh, really? that's funny. I don't see. I think because I've been doing it for so long. Yes. I don't, and I think I because I find it much easier to express myself in writing mm. than I probably do um, in words or in person. So for me, it's always been really easy to get it out there. So I have to sometimes take a step back and imagine how it would feel to 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 feel that that's really exposing. Yes. And so with these. These the few people who've come to me recently asking for advice. I think that you're the only person who can find your voice, and your voice should be sort of similar. If it's a personal brand, should be similar to the voice you would use with your friends or yes. um, to talk about anything. So I I can develop a voice for a brand if it's a faceless brand. If there's a person behind, like with the early hour, I'm I'm the face of it. It needs to be true to me and true to my values and um, and true to the way I speak in real life. If suddenly um, I was, you know, popping all these words into articles and I didn't know what they meant, when people then met me in real life, they'd think I was thick. <laughs> they'd see that I was thick. <laughs> so I think it's got to be sincere. It's got to be um, just really about you. But it can help to have someone with experience um, look over what you're doing and tweak it. And even with another of my clients, she writes blogs and I edit them. Uh, and in time, I'm seeing that she is starting to write in the same way that I'm editing. So where once she was coming and there was lots of changes, now she'll give me something. And it just doesn't need so many changes because she's started to see together we've, we've, we've created this voice and this way of writing blogs. And, and she just totally gets it. Brilliant. And she gets lots of smiley faces at the end after, after she <laughs> it. Like, yes, you've done very well. Um, no, I'm, I'm not, not a fan of emojis. <laughs> no. Sometimes there's just so many that I just think, gosh, it's taken me so long to actually write the copy. I can't find the perfect thing that I need. So, um, Do you know, it's a, that's a funny thing. It's slightly off topic, but I, whenever people submit a piece, uh, an article to the early hour, I have to say I've got a, li- a little list of guidelines and I have to say, sorry if this is patronising, but please don't use any emojis and be sparing with exclamation marks. And then I have to say I do understand why people want to use them because it's we're so used to using them in, in text and in Instagram posts and things yes. to to convey an emotion. But actually, there are always words that can do that and you've got to sometimes... Um, try and find a different way of saying it without yeah yes, I yes, find it quite interesting store us out you know <laughs> don't, don't resolve back I remember my yeah. dad buying me um, a dictionary before I went to secondary school but I um, I didn't get my locker until I don't know the second term or something and I was so mm. worried about not having all the right stuff so I had like my PE kit I had my swimming kit I had my dictionary I had like all the things and I was such a titch as well at school so I was uh... just always loaded down um, <laughs> I would love to know more about actually pitching and you know I know that you've had some fantastic writers myself included I'm not putting myself yeah. in that category um, but how how would you say um, would you write a really great pitch that is not only going to stand out but 
um, give options, I would say, because sometimes I've had moments where I pitch something and the editor has really enjoyed it, but they need something else from me, which is a different flavour. So I'd love you to chat about that. That would be really useful. About if you want, if, like on a kind of PR yeah, side so of things. If you, see, if you see a magazine, say, for example, the early hour, and you think, oh, well, actually, that would be really aligned. How would somebody get your attention? So um, the way that the way that I pitch my articles or if I'm doing PR for someone else is um, informed by the way people pitch to me. And I guess that's why, what you're asking. So for the, for the early hour, what I really like is if someone if someone wants me to talk about their product or their business or if they want to write an article for the early hour, then it's nice. Well, the subject line is the first thing and it needs to be something um, that grabs my attention but not in a really annoying gimmicky way like yes. don't use all capital letters so many PR people do that and it's really annoying don't use loads of exclamation marks don't use emojis just do something like um so if it were you maybe you'd want to be writing about um how to find the perfect work-life balance so in a subject line I'd say um I have the secret to um the perfect work-life balance Great. And so then within the email, always use the editor's name or the journalist's name. So dear Annie, um, and if you can find some of their writing or something about the publication you're asking to be featured in and comment on it, that really helps. So I always do it. I'd always say, oh, I've just seen this article you wrote in um, The Guardian and it was so good. I love this about it. And it's just it's endearing the, uh, you know, yourself to the editor because otherwise you're a complete stranger and you it can feel like people are just well PR people often do just sort of shove out press releases and it's really impersonal and I just delete them immediately if it's if it comes through and it's not um got my name on it so it's not they haven't thought about it working really well for the early hour specifically then I just delete it without reading it at all and I'm sure lots of other editors do the same thing so find find something personal to talk about it could be a tweet that they've written or an Instagram post it could be an article they've edited or or put out and then just um I've done it in different ways but I think probably a, a really good paragraph is enough Mm. I wouldn't attach anything because the likelihood is they're not going to open a press release. I wouldn't paste your whole press release in because they're not going to spend ages reading it. And unless it's a really good story, like um, Kim Palmer, who set up Clementine, who I write the copy for, she gets away with writing quite long emails to editors because her story is so captivating. Yes. It's a real, like she takes you on a real journey. But I'd say most people and most ideas aren't quite as Unless it, yeah, it's got to be, if it's really personal, then I think write the whole journey, but still try to keep it as brief as possible. And if it's something more general, like if you were to write the, the work life article I made up for you earlier, um, just, just a paragraph. Yeah, paragraph about, um, who you are, what the article idea is and why you're the best person to write it. Yes, that's so good because actually the paragraph has to be relevant to not only who you are and where you are right now. And when I was an agent working with um, with actors, you'd often get these long winged ideas of like, I first found my love of acting when I was in a school assembly. And you think, actually, it's not relevant right now no. to get to the point. Um, exactly. I would love to talk a bit more about monetizing and how you can work with brands and and, um collaborate um because i feel like well the the guidelines are, are emerging as we speak you know the sponsored posts and the ads and, and things like that but if somebody had been writing for a while and was looking to use their writing as perhaps an income stream what mm. would be the steps that they would take so there are different routes, but if, for instance, you are writing a personal blog about your motherhood experience, um, you, it's always good to grow a bit of a following, but also pay attention to the way your, the aesthetic of your blog, that really matters, mm. to, um, the way you're writing. So do, do develop a, a voice for yourself 
make sure there are no typos or, or grammatical errors. You've got to really proofread because it just puts people off working with you. It looks really unprofessional if you're putting stuff out there that's that's got um, errors. So make sure everything looks really good. It reads really well. Um, share it as much as you can on social media, get as many followers as you can. And then I say so you can do things like there's affiliate window, I think it's called, which is a website and you sign up and you put a bit of code into your, um, if you're using WordPress, for instance, put a bit of work, code into WordPress and adverts pop up and then you get paid every time. I don't think it's a click through thing. It's more once someone's clicked through and bought something <laughs> from Gap, then you get one percent of the sales something yeah it's like it's it's not a good way to do it unless you have loads of um loads of followers who really trust you and who well the idea is i suppose you you have those adverts coming up and then you could do you could do something like say it was gap then you could have an article all about um the best clothes for kids to wear in the summer and you could have um a few gap items and then when they click through you'd also get money but that I think when you're starting out, that's not the best route. The best thing to do is to be really bold and just approach people and ask them if they'd like to write sponsored posts or if they'd like to sponsor you in some way or work to bet together on a campaign. I think probably, yeah, cold calling is, is the much harder but more lucrative uh, way to go. Sharing your personality and sharing how you're different is so key as well that, you know, you can do a, you can try and just replicate what everybody else has done, but actually doing your own thing is, is far easier, I would say. Um, mm. And in terms of you having these many strings to your bow, which are all sort of of the same flavor, what's the best thing about your, your lifestyle and this new phase of your career? Well, since I've started for a long time, I was focusing all my energy on the early hour and but have always been mostly a mother and, part, you know, working part time. So I've only ever had um, two days of childcare um, with any one child. I've now got two kids. So my eldest is in full time childcare, but I've only got two days of childcare for the young one. So um, I realized really recently at the beginning of this year that I needed to step back from the early hour in terms of content. So put out a bit less content, push it a bit more on social media, but focus on the stuff that brings in the money. So, so rather than looking for, um, sales opportunities via the early hour, which, you know, sponsor posts and things, they do bring in money, but I have to act as a salesperson and that's not what I want to do. I want to be a writer and an editor. Yes. So. I decided to stop pushing that side of things and to instead turn to freelance work and do consultancy and PR and social media and writing and editing for other people, which not only brings in money immediately, but also um, is there's an end to it. It's a project. So I'm asked to write an article and I write it and I send it off and that's it. And I'm paid. Whereas the early hour is just this thing that it's it's always there and it's ongoing. <laughs> and I love it for that. And I'm continuing to grow it, which is really exciting. And it does grow month on month. And the community side of it really excites me and people getting engaged and starting conversations. But that can carry on without me putting 90% of my effort into that. I want to be putting maybe 20% of my effort into that and 80% into the stuff that just pays me right now because I've got childcare costs and house costs and, you know, yeah, um, life. Uh, so life costs. <laughs> so I want to have, and so now I'm creating a bit of a portfolio of clients, regular clients who pay me good money to work for them each week. And that's now my childcare hours. And then my, the sort of super, not superfluous, it's still important, but the stuff that's more for me, like the early hour, like my personal writing, creative writing, that's evening stuff and nap time stuff and uh, times when I don't have childcare. Fantastic. And it's so refreshing, actually, when you because I remember you writing the post about how you were you were shifting and um, in terms of your content schedule. And it was so 
I could I could almost feel the sense of relief from reading. Oh, really? <laughs> like, but 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 I guess because I related to it myself that sometimes mm. as a creative person, there's you come up with so many ideas and so many different angles, and you're always in that idea zone. But actually, once you mm. have children, there's other things that you need to do as well, and um, yeah, you know, it can be full on. Um, yeah, I would love to know if there's any books that you've read in terms of business or self development or you know, well and any books that have sort of changed the direction or given you something um that has changed the way that you move forward i don't i do i have loads of business books the first one i read um it's not so much a business book, but Sheryl Sandberg's Lean In, um, which is a famous one about um, women putting themselves forward and not not thinking that they can't be at the table, both yes. um, literally and metaphorically. Um, so I read that. And then at the time I was I had a full time job as a copywriter and I started asking for pay rises and getting them and and thing. And that that really worked well for me at the time. Um, in sort of empowering me and reminding me that just because I was a woman and just because I might have children at some point in the future, I was still um, a valuable member of the team. Um, yeah, and I became pregnant and asked for another pay rise. And I remember my dad saying, I don't don't think you should be asking for a pay rise. You know, just try and hold on to your job. You're pregnant. You can have a baby. And I was like, no, I think you're wrong. So I went in and asked for more money and got it because why wouldn't I? I was still, I was still, um, able to write copy (laughs) even if I was pushing further and further away from the desk things it's kind of you know the different kind of voices this is why you know I could go on a whole big rant here but you know having those different voices at the table and different life experiences yes yes important exactly absolutely um Yeah. yeah so that that Cheryl Sandberg book I found really good. And I've, I'm reading her second one at the moment about resilience. I can't remember what it's called. Plan, plan A or B, option B, option, option yeah, B. option B. Yeah. And it's so, oh my God, the opening is the saddest thing I've ever read in my life. But, um, it's another, I, I just like the way she talks. I know there's lots of criticisms about her kind of class and not understanding people, but if you, are able to sort of push that aside she's got some really good points being COO of Facebook about how to succeed in life yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but apart from that I'm not a massive business book person because I never have enough time to read a whole book so I'm much more into articles and even then there's not one website that I go to I go to business insider or entrepreneur.com the Guardian, anywhere, but it's more stuff that pops up on social media, and I'm like, oh, that sounds good. I I need to work out how to, um, do, you know, learn uh, more about SEO or whatever it is, or I just Google it and whatever comes up. Well, whatever my challenge is. Six of, uh, of this podcast is all about SEO, so uh, I'll ah. share it then because I think that when we're doing it all by ourselves, that we have to learn all of these skills, and sometimes we yeah. don't necessarily know them. And I was saying this on another episode the other day that to look outside your industry as well is is really fascinating because you can mm. pull from from different ideas. So uh, yeah, definitely. Well, yeah. I'm going today to meet after this um, podcast going to meet a new mentor who's in a totally different field to me but she we're going to work together but she's going to be my mentor and um I when I first started learning about mentors I always assumed I'd need someone who was an editor of a magazine so that they'd know exactly (laughs) the devil um, wears Prada yeah yeah (laughs) um but then I realized it's not about that it's about someone who's got loads of experience and like you say it can be in a totally different industry but they can still inform you and uh, teach you and guide you Amazing. and uh yeah, yeah. It's so important and to, just to reach out because those mentors don't necessarily yeah. knock on your door and say hey uh sweetheart I'd like to look after you and no. do that. you know you have to do it yourself um just as a, a final question where would you like to be in five years time Hmm. I'd like to still be working part time. So I have lots of time with my children while they're young. I, oh, I don't know. I've only been planning for this year. The aim, the aim this year is to earn, <laughs> is to earn 100 grand. Yes. It was the, the same aim last year. It didn't happen. But um, 
and two, I've got a list of publications that I want to write for, and I've been ticking them off. Amazing. Um, but I, yeah, I'd like to write the others. But I'm also write, doing a, a novel writing course at the moment. And so I'd like to, at the end of this year, have completed my novel and perhaps to have completed a second or third in five years' time and had it published and become a bestseller. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd like to focus a bit more on creative writing alcongside the, the money stuff. Well, watch this space, you know, look how much you've done in, you know, since your daughter's being born. I th- and I think that's the thing that on the com- on social media, there is that conversation of, you know, mums being shoved out. But actually, if we are shoved out, we do our own thing anyway. And we're resourceful and we crack on yes. regardless. And um, yeah, sometimes there can be that focus of going, oh, my goodness, there's so much change to make. But actually, a lot of us are making the change, you know, quietly one step at a time behind their behind their laptops at home in lounge pads. yeah absolutely <laughs> and so if people want to find out more about you and the early hour and your consultancy services where should they go so the early hour.com is my website but my freelance work is there's lots of information at annie ridout.com ridout is r-i-d-o-u-t Brilliant. Yeah. Thank you so much for your all your insight. I know that we're going to get lots of questions and, and continue the conversation. So we will do that over on Instagram when this episode goes live. Thank you so Great. much, Annie. I really thanks, Nikki. To you, thank you. And you. Bye. Bye. Thanks so much for listening to today's episode. If you haven't already, feel free to rate, review and subscribe for all the brand new episodes. If you want to go deeper with my support, check out my freebies house and unlock the rooms you choose. NikkiRaby.com forward slash freebies house. I also have workshops, programs and one-on-one bespoke offerings. For prices, availability or just to have a chat with me, go to NikkiRaby.com. Thank you as always for spending some time with me and my guests and I'll see you next time.